My whole life just to feel like Now all these feelings never let me down A thousand places everywhere I go I feel the heart beating And even for this is my home Oh, it never let me go
Добрый вечер, ребятки. Погнали сегодня в лостовый денек. Я ни хрена не выспался. Потому что вместо того, чтобы отсыпаться, я ходил на работу. Поэтому как-нибудь так сейчас сообразим. Поболтаем, посмотрим, переводим, наслаждаемся самыми лучшими, самыми сущими конференциями. Я на там будет анонсов побольше, чем Microsoft, как-никак хостит Epic Game Store, а это контора херни не сделает, как говорится. Значит, сейчас будем ждать еще 10 минуток с вами, даже меньше. И там будет самая замечательная конференция, которая не сдает свои... Э, подтверждает свои заниженные пределы ожидания уже лет 5. Моя любимая пока гейминг шоу которая в свое время, наверное, самая первая конференция их была очень-очень длинной и очень-очень скучной. Они вроде научились побольше себя, скажем так, эм, как вам сказать, ограничить в хронометраже, увеличивать, скажем так, концентрацию анонсов на промежуток времени. И в целом, в целом, хотя бы стали смотрибельны что не может не радовать. Поэтому, поэтому вот, в принципе, будем пытаться что-то изображать, что-то искать интересно. Вдруг действительно нас ребята порадуют. А, вдруг порадуют каким-нибудь интересным портом с консолей на православную платформу. Вдруг э, сделают еще что-нибудь классное. Вдруг ремастеры систем шоки uh, я не знаю что, что может нам еще интересно преподнести пока гейминг шоу к минимуму сюда заглянет microsoft к минимуму сюда заглянет не знаю какой-нибудь представитель rockstar что очень очень маловероятно что рано так что ждем наверное срдр то только в следующем году вместе с э, анонсом расширенных изданий на новое поколение консолей, вот тогда и появится RDR на ПК. А, что, 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 что еще может быть потенциально интересно быть? Ну, стратегии, конечно, стратегии, Индия. Если это можно, конечно, назвать интересным. Не более того. Не более того. Так, у меня вроде везде все нормально расписано. Ах, да, вот еще. Посмотрим, что у нас будет. Я нашел интересную табличку на 3D News. Там написано, что между ПК Гейминг Шоу перед Ubisoft в 23 часа, в 22 часа появится Limited Run, Ga Limited Run Games. Давайте узнаем, что это такое. А, Limited Run Games это некий игровой разработчик из... Северной Каролины, что они делают, давайте посмотрим. А, индюшки на Switch, на Switch, ага. Ага. 
Угу. Угу. Я понял. Походу, <laughs> это не к нам. Хорошо. <laughs> Хорошо, я понял. Ну, в смысле, что хорошо вам видно. Ну, какая разница? Тут пока по мелочи, ребят. И вот будет стрим, будет вам все видно. Вот, короче, я смотрю полное аниме. Походу, знаешь, это ми минимум у нас. Вот между Ubisoft и Square Enix можно будет интересно глянуть AMD. И что такое Kinda Funny Games? Kinda Funny Games. Понятно, это еще какое-то отдельное шоу, поэтому даже бесполезно. Я стратегии. Да сейчас будут я пока гейминг шоу, он 4,5 минуты осталось. Буду сейчас обмазаться своими стратегиями, что прям ппц. Как говорится, главное, чтобы ведущая была. Причем миленькая, приятненькая. Не говори, Лаки. Просто не говори. А, пфф. Ой, Лаки, ты пошел на завод после мелкомягких, я пошел на завод после Девольвер. Ты так что еще вообще слабенький пацан. Губы... Молоко на губах не обсохло. Спать после Юбиков? Сквать? Спать после Скворешников? Не надейся даже. Спать после Скворешников, как всегда. Завтра. Как вчера, точнее. Пять утра. Ну, может, скорешники за полчаса управляются, кто их знает. Вполне может быть и такое. Что вот? Так, блин, представь. Сейчас я чечек заварю. Чем бы выше строки конференции, которые уже были? Ради моего оформительского перфекционизма, который не идеален. Ну и плюс, что возникла, у людей возникают вопросы. Да, та или иная конференция. Им всегда можно указать на таймер. И всегда можно указать на бегущую строку. И иногда бывают умные люди, которые тебя не достают и смотрят на то, что написано. Потому что читать это полезно умение, особенно в 2019 году. Немногие люди умеют читать, немногие люди умеют слушать. Но для таких людей я говорю, и для таких людей я делаю оформление, как ни странно. Далее, если ваша конференция, можешь сказать на крестик справа сверху. Когда такие люди, как... Ладно, не буду говорить. В общем, минутка, ребят, осталась. 
Хем, чат, вебка нужны. Конференция как-никак будет не слишком красочной, скажем так, поэтому, если хотите, можно вам оставить вебку и чат, если вам так хочется. Как-никак, такое пока что сделать можно, ибо это пока гейминг шоу. Оставляй, хорошо? Погнали. This is the PC Gaming Show, a celebration of the most vibrant gaming. Почему-то голос мужика гораздо громче, чем музыка на заднем фоне. All new gameplay footage, trailers and interviews. Taking the stage today are first gameplay footage for the Masquerade. Тебе, наверное, не кажется? А может это воображение дорисовывает прекрасную картину? Starmancer, Last Oasis. Two new games from Coffee Stain Studios. Griftlands. Planet Zoo. What's next for Terraria? Oh, вот это мои любимые игры, которые я жду. Warframe. Ну, Warframe-чик его как. Каждый год на ПК Gaming Show всегда ждем что-то про Warframe. Alejo. Age of Wonders. Planetfall. And more. And now your PC gaming show hosts Day9 and Frankie Ward. Hey! Good morning, good Hello! morning. Yes! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the PC Gaming Show! Yeah! Ой, ведущие те же самые, все прекрасно. Ребята обещают 30 игр на сегодняшний вечер. Многие из них... И многие из этих игр уже будут, скажем так, релизом, то просто апдейты. Ну, мировые примеры нас... Мировыми примерами нас не обделят. Большое спасибо хотят сказать всем партнерам, всем компаниям, которые спонсируют Дарен на мероприятии. Их очень много, видите, сейчас на экране. Этих ребят, многие с них мы сегодня увидим. Догадайся, Лаки. We're happy to have you. My name is Day9. I'm one of your hosts for this event. Joining me is the fantastic Frankie Ward. Hello. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. Hello, everyone. Now, for you guys at home, for the first time, whatever platform you're watching on, we are going to be pulling your clever comments. Just, just remember that I said clever comments from Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook throughout the show, making you famous. On the internet, on the screen, we're going to be sharing them live. Ребят, залетайте, короче, на канал ПК Геймеру на Твиче, чтобы ваши сообщения выводили прямо в прямом эфире, если вам это что-то бери надо. Если Питик может увидеть ваши сообщения в прямом эфире прямо сейчас, причем любое. Первый проект за 3 биллион на сегодня. Соответственно, это сиквел игры старой доброй Evil Genius, которая, которая вышла давным-давным-давно, но снискала на самом деле значительную популярность. Такой тукон с прицелом на сеттинг Джеймса Бонда. А теперь первая премьерка. Как меня слышно на фоне стрима потише надо сделать погромче. А я говорю, стрим потише. Все огонь, идеально. Угу. 
Угу. Можете сейчас зарегаться, чтобы получить эксклюзивный доступ в закрытую бету. Ой, смотрите, какой мужчина в перчаточках, какой он прям Ох, плечи, плечистый. Нам, походу, сейчас покажут мировую премьеру геймплея Маскарада. Ребята, из парадокса. Guess I have to be the one to tell you. You're dead. I thought you were going to tell me. What did you die? Huh? That's very unpleasant to see. But truth is, most of you types won't even make it a whole year. We have one rule: you don't break the masquerade. Ничего нового, первый квартал 20 предзаказ открыт давно. Расскажите немножко о вампирах в этом мире. What what it is? It's it's kind of a darker version of our world, and the vampires kind of uh, need to keep their presence secret from humanity. So ну, the vampires are. Ну, то есть, соответственно, вы окажетесь в более такой темной части мира нашей вселенной. Соответственно, вампиры они особенные люди, особенные существа, которые могут манипулировать обычными людьми. It's not just a case of blood and filling up your health meter. Is it actually different types of blood do different things? That's right. So we have the resonance system, which means that essentially vampires can kind of like like see the emotional resonance of human beings, like fear or desire. Различные параметры, скажем так, взаимодействия человека и вампира будут основаны на том, как они будут с вами, ну, что они будут от вас ощущать в плане эмоций, то есть страх, удовольствие и все это, соответственно, будет влиять, я так понял, на показатели. Крови, которую будете с них всасывать. Вот различные способы взаимодействия, в том числе и, грубо говоря, 18 ⁇ и грубые, и нежные, и, понимаете, сексуальные. In the game, when you were made as a vampire, sort of a very young vampire, a lot of other vampires were made at the same time, and this thing called the mass embrace, and that means that essentially they're having a less lucky time than you in the world. You're having a relatively good time compared to them because they don't know what they're doing. They're going through vampire puberty. Вы будете играть за молодого такого вампира, который будет э, попадать э, в окружение вампиров куда более старших, и таких же, как и он, будет такой особый вампирский пубертатный период, такая, даже сказать, вампирская дедовщина. Поэтому вам будет очень интересно все это переживать. Что, дорогие Риан? Стань тише. Well, you know what? I think there are people around the world watching this, and of course the audience here, and they all can't wait to play this game. Can you wait, guys? So I think you've convinced everyone here now. When are we going to be able to play the game? We're going Q1 next year. Fantastic. When can we learn more? Bloodlines2.com. Thank you so much, Brian. Больше информации на официальном сайте. Точной даты релиза пока нет. Have you ever wanted to play Dwarf Fortress in space? Starmancer is a space station sim from Omanux Games and Chucklefish. 
Не, ведущий огонь, прям, ребят, за лучшая часть пока гейминг шоу это ведущая второй год подряд пока что. Следующий геймплей показали. Трейлер на геймплей. Сейчас увидите. Космосим. Какой идеальный лого. Космосим по постройке собственной колонии, по расширению, ну, в общем, такой ФТЛ э, для... Расширенный ФТЛ. Хотя тут, наверное, не будет э, именно как таких развитых боев. Я бы даже сказал, это тоже такой тукон уровня Evil Genius 2. Хотя, как видите, можно будет заиметь друзей. Ну, акцент, как видите, не на боях, а на... Или на боях тоже. На боях, видимо, тоже. В общем, контента будет хватать. ФТЛ, ты в ФТЛ играл? Я играл в ФТЛ. Я понимаю, что тут другая перспектива. Но сеттинг и именно оформление в плане такого вот кубического... Кубизма. Ну, кубизма. Пикселизма, назовем это так. Очень похоже. Не поли Командора. В смысле не поли Командора? Идите вы к черту. И это напоминает очень по веянию ФТЛ. Я думаю, что люди, которые играли в ФТЛ, им это понравится. Минимум по оформлению и по сеттингу. Ой, пошли, черт, троллейбас. Both you started as modders, working independently, not running your own studios. What, talk to me about the collaboration that you started together. Giving them some advice when they were modders going commercial, helping them not make the mistakes that we made. And uh, we've been friends and we always wanted to work together. And now we've sort of formed this independent former mod team, professional super group. Так сказать, когда ребята из независимой разработки начинают создавать такие небольшие альянсы для создания нечто более интересного, нечто более перспективного. Ребята хотят продемонстрировать такой более более комплексный вид на FPS fighting, назовем это так. Я не знаю, как называются вот такого рода бои от первого лица в средневековье, но для меня это всегда такой файтинг. 3D файтинг. Керали 2 <laughs> выйдет в 2020. Торн Баннер и Tripwire Studios. Причем игра выйдет в Epic Game Store. Выйдет ли она в Steam? Да, наверное, выйдет. Там просто именно справа снизу. Э, поддержка Epic Game Store. Выйдется ли это в эксклюзивность? Посада танков, захват. конечно же, просто открытые бои. Будет у вас прям просто взаимодействие. Это просто 
And on top of that increased scale, we've added horses, which really allows us to add a lot of drama to the game and bring experiences like the Battle of the Bastards from Ребята, думаю, после релиза Маркау будут и оттуда многие идеи черпать. Ребята полностью переработали эту систему. Лучше анимация, лучше распредвижение. And also has the satisfaction of the, and the weight that you would expect when two I'm medium sure medium light and armor process, are flashing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very, it's very, it's very fluid it's and much more accessible than the previous game. And it's, you know, the, the, the pace is so much quicker. It was what I really enjoy when. Yeah, I'm going to ask about the fluidity because in a lot of melee combat games, you hit a button and there's like a full animation swing and then you sort of reset. So it's kind of these discrete, chunky times. I understand that in Chivalry 2, the sword play operates differently than that. Yeah, we kind of think of it like when you're swimming, where you're kind of constantly using both arms at the same time. And yeah. a, a core part of our focus this time around has been making it so that players can fight multiple opponents at the same time. Like one 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 exactly, because that's fundamentally part of the, 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 the becoming the ultimate for your fans and the achieving glory on the battlefield. Well, I mean, I mean, mastery, but the original chivalry is, I mean, it's kind of like silly fun. Like, how do you balance the mastery with the fun element? Yeah, our goal has always been to make it so that players can take the game as seriously as they want to, and also as silly as they want to. Um, we know that probably about half of our audience is getting drunk. Yeah, and we love that. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, but it's an important metric to track. And the game has a huge influence from Monty Python as well. I mean, in the over-the-top voice over voice of the game, I mean, the game is genuinely glorious. Монтипайта. Поэтому вся вот эта вот легкая фриковость, она все равно в игре останется. Но и в то же время это будет такая полноценная игра. Эксклюзивно будет небольшой для Epic Games Store первое время, выйдет в начале 2020 года. We are just getting started here at the PC Gaming Show. Let's take a look at what's coming up next. You're watching the PC Gaming Show. Coming up. Ну что, ребят, ждем с Хирали 2. In Planet Zoo. From the creators of Darksiders, Remnant from the Ashes. Mm, создатели Darksiders вообще что-то готовят. More trailers, interviews, and gameplay footage. Если что, насколько я помню, Banner Reward 2, он был даже на самом первом <laughs> гейминг-шоу. А это был, как-никак, я вам напомню, 2015 год. Или нет, 2015? 2015, да. О, симулятор... Битмана. Мозаика. Начало... Не, в 2000... Ой, начало 19-го. Уже полгода прошло. Выйдет. В этом году, а еще можете в нашу Блибок поиграть на мобилках. Не Мослик, а Мозаик. Charge up your proton packs and get ready for Midnight Ghost Hunt. Мультиплеерная игра на популярных режимах основана. Вот вам мировой эксклюзив. Сажайтесь. Скоро будет. Ух. 
Ой, это та с... Ага. А знаете, была, были же да, такие игры, где надо было прятаться от ведьмы или от кого-то, будучи предметом. Вот, видимо, решили переработать немножко концепцию, хотя суть будет та же самая. Ребят, если что, игры все равно интереснее, чем на конференции Electronic Arts. Держу в курсе. Атаковать можно будет? Вау, вот это классно. По-моему, в таких играх нельзя было атаковать. А кабах, четкий троллейбас. Мама довольна. Регистрируйтесь на альфу. Joining me on the stage to talk about Midnight Ghost Hunt is the dynamic one-man team, creative director, programmer, designer. It's Sam Malone. Sam Malone, разработчик, самоучка, можно судя по всему, который разработал игру в одиночку. What is Midnight Ghost Hunt all about? So Midnight Ghost Hunt is a multiplayer ghost hunting hide and seek game. Uh, you can play as either as ghosts or ghost hunters, like a 4v4 format. I see. Uh, the ghosts are hiding inside the haunted house. The objects around the haunted house. Uh, the goal is to look like a ghost hunter, but on the inside, they're not so harmless ghosts as you saw. Yeah, and if I'm understanding correctly, it's not a ghost hunter. It's actually you do that so that way you can keep running away and continue to hide. Exactly. So the main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective of the ghost is to try to stay hidden as long as you can. The main objective So they've got gadgets, like a footprint tracker. They've got like a radar, like you saw, to try to narrow down where in the haunted house these ghosts are hiding, basically. Also, some boot radar. No, it starts getting a bit more chaotic. And when you have a ghost flying everywhere, you have that cannon. Really try to smash the ghosts into pieces. So those are the kind of aspects. Talk to me a little bit about the inspiration for Midnight Ghost Hunt. The inspiration for Midnight Ghost Hunt. I understand it's based on. Gary's mod mod called Prop Hunt. Чем появился в качестве вдохновения? You saw the furniture. They hurled themselves at you. They knock you out. They send you flying. So it kind of looks like a Garis mod of the Garis mod. I started to look at it. A little bit afraid of the the things that you're hunting. So that changes up the dynamic a good amount, I think. And I want to ask about when the clock strikes midnight. We saw the very spooky moon pop up. We didn't see what happens then. What's going on? So midnight. If even one ghost survives four minutes into the match. Then you hear this ominous grandfather clock chime across the map. All the lights will actually flicker out. It'll get really dark and scary, and all the ghosts that were destroyed actually return as vengeful spirits. Ah, yes, if only one призрак до полночи остался жив, то вся, скажем так, область игровая становится слегка темнее, куда более пугающей, и уже погибшие призраки они возвращаются, оживают снова. Usually the ghosts win when it gets to midnight. Are you talking like like 90 percent of the time? Like 90, yeah, usually because the ghosts are so overpowered at midnight. The hunters are doing whatever they can to try to prevent midnight from even occurring by destroying all the ghosts and clearing the house, basically. Well, awesome. When can people get the chance to try out? Ну как никак это игра, где потенциально может быть два игровых блока. Это на самом деле интересно, что можно закомбочить на призрак. Это интересное решение. Later in the summer, we'll be giving out these. On our Discord as well as on our main website. Wonderful, ladies and gentlemen, Sam Malone. Чувака есть Discordик, у чувака есть сайтик. Вы интересовались? Лезем в интернетики, подписываемся на. We got Frankie up in the balcony, and if I understand correctly, Frankie, this is a sequel. 
А теперь Фрэнки расскажет про другую игру. Это сиквел для маленькой инди-игры. Вам придется решать различные головомочки в красивом мире. Там действовать различными существами и дружить с людишками. Но в игре придется все-таки умирать, умирать и умирать. Соответственно, игра будет называться... Я не расслышал как. Драгерин, пошел в жопу! надо было, извините. Люблю пикач чисто из-за троллейбасеров. Unexport 2 Открытый доступ на платформе Фиг, я так понял, это игра еще с краудфандингом. Микрофон мужику дали? А, чувак из Samsung сейчас будет показывать мониторы. Осталось, как говорится, прихерачить монитор. Герцы, ой, где-то сейчас чихает один рейкет. Абджи, а! Двести сорок, о! Гейминг монитор. Я перегрузил микрофон. Ну, сори. Сори. Надеюсь, ты буду меньше орать. Да, Гирин, если тебе что-то не нравится, Donation Alerts под стримом, там всегда можно кинуть на новый микрофон, буду рад видеть денежки на моем счету. Да, Киберкатетки должны одобрить. Монитор будет доступен. Извините, я немножко не расслышал. В июле выйдет 27-дюймовый монитор. Как он? Я не расслышал. Прям 400 он долларов сказал или сколько? 
Ага, монитор не 4К, если что. А вот это, конечно, парень... Парни прямо из зала задали вопрос, а он немножко подлился. Мне кажется... Хотя кому надо 4К? Киберкотлеткам не нужно 4К. Не, Неркан, можно как бы всегда сделать там условно 60 Гц 4К Ой, 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 какая прелестная девушка. Hello, everyone. Thanks for the warm applause. Um, it's very exciting for all of us at Funcom to be here at the PC Gaming Show. Natasha Rosli. And naturally, we would like to show some of the cool stuff that we've been working on. So, without further ado, here are some of the games coming for 2019. Сейчас немножко про апдейты для их игр, которые выйдут еще в этом году. Новые карты для их игры Mutant Year Zero. Новые монстрики. А что для Конна было представлено, я немножко не понял. Игра еще не вышла, это типа анонс даты или что? Но вот эта игра выйдет только под Хэллоуин этого года. Луна, луны безумия. My son, off to fly among the stars. Please welcome to the stage, founder and director of Mighty Kingdom, Philip Mays. Philip Mayer? So yeah, as Falcom, we've been doing our own games for over 26 years now. But recently we had the great pleasure to be working with some other very talented developers and help them publish their games. And on that note, I'd like to introduce Phil Mays. Uh, he is founder of Mighty Kingdom, a studio out of Australia, who has been working with us on something a little different. Thank you, Natasha. Welcome to the new game Mighty Kingdom, called Conan Chop Chop. And uh, considering the date, it's the most surprising thing that 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 was uh, April Fool's joke. So, uh, yeah, we have a little surprise for you. Check Ребята выпустили такой легкий концепт еще во время первого апреля, или они сейчас покажут какую-то вещь, которая будет казаться прям первоапрельской шуткой, но она реально выйдет. Стэнсон, ты понимаешь, что этот стиль ей еще хотя бы идет? Радуйся, что не вышло. А я не буду нарушать правила Твича. Да, эта игра все-таки была апрельской шуткой, но... Многие очень сильно ее просили. И, судя по всему, она выйдет.
Вон он, чоп-чоп. 3 сентября. So there you have it, uh, Conan Chop Chop. It's a roguelike action adventure game. Uh, it's very real, and it's coming to PC, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch on September the 3rd this year. It's 2019. We also have a playable version here at E3 at our demo room, so if you want to give stick figure Conan a try, then please don't hesitate to drop by. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me just cut it. Last Oasis is a nomadic survival game set in a post-apocalyptic future where the Earth has stopped rotating. The last humans need to outrun the blazing sun in massive open-world environments. Good times. But cheer up, sunshine. This is one of the most original-looking multiplayers we've seen, with interesting ideas underneath. A player-driven economy and some incredibly incredible death machines. Coming to early access on Steam on July 15th, let's take a trip to the last Oasis. Так, а теперь игра из Early Access Steam. -а. Вы же любите подобного рода игры? Получайте. Контент подъехал. We must move forward or die beneath the sun. Дирижабль. Ага. Ммм, таранчик. Last Days, Last Oasis, 3 сентября тоже будет с, будет с Чоп Чопом конкурировать. Короче, сентябрь. Ну да, так сказать, начнут осень очень уверенно. Начнут с двух индюшек, закончат фифой 20 солнечных футболов. Пингвин. Боевые пингвины. Я окей. Я понял. Игра в космическом сеттинге, всякими такими кипердемонами, динозаврами, и тут еще боевые пингвины. Ребята отрываются во время разработки, видимо. The name of the game is Age of Wonders Planetfall, a 4X strategy game, and joining me on the stage to talk about it is the game director Leonard Sass and principal gameplay developer Tom Bird. Welcome, guys. Hi. Good to be here. Good to be here. So, Leonard, just give us the gist of what Age of Wonders Planetfall is all about. Sure. Age of Wonders is a turn-based strategy game where you play as one of the survivors of a shattered galactic empire. At the start of the game, you choose or, or create your own faction. Yeah. Include, uh, the Vanguard Expeditionary Forces, who are so when everything went to hell. Um, there's scavenging cyborgs, or the Amazon bioengineers, who ride dinosaurs to battle. You know, I want to ask, because there's a pretty broad range of 4X strategy games, to give a sense of what the gameplay is, I just want to start from the beginning of a game. What happens when you first land on the planet? Well, uh, you when you're in a spaceship, spaceship, the spaceship comes down onto the planet. The planet well, is where the entire game takes place. Mm -hmm. And that spaceship will then transform into a capital colony, where your entire empire begins. You sort of attempt to take over the world. Around you, you've got a number of sectors, and each of these sectors are little smaller than most of them. So maybe you'll find a genetic lab that's still full of horrible mutant creatures, and a team of complex, overrun by horrible robot monsters, a temple of holes in the sky, horrible demons. Genetic laboratories will create their own. 
монстра. И я теперь понимаю, кто именно добавил безумных пингвинов в игру. Вот этот вот чувак по центру. Ребят, блин, руки вот, я не ставлю вопрос. You know, I saw the expansive tech tree show up in the game briefly, and I know that growing resources and tech is a huge part of yeah. strategy games. How does that function? Right, so part of these tech trees come for your origin race. They sort of represent the past of where you came from. They include new units, uh, new modules for your units, like jetpacks for your troopers, orbital laser cannons you can launch from space, um, social doctrines, it's not all about war. Um, yeah. And then uh, the second part is actually uh, uh, technology, and that's all about the future of your faction. Uh, so you can create like a combination between man and machine or man and computers. Yeah. Uh, other Ой, things so that's do 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 that that Технологии у вас в армии могут быть люди с роботами, люди с паразитами, люди с мутантами, в общем, химичите, создавайте чудеса, чудают, как хотите. Поэтому волосатый коленки сработали. Гитман When you come back, go into combat, you will zoom all the way in and you will be inside the lab. You'll see all the pipes and all of the goops flowing around. All of your units which you've been putting together and built are now deployed. In turn-based combat, you can move them into cover, use their abilities, shoot laser cannons. Maybe you've chosen the Dvar, so you've got like a bunch of space force. So the card will be divided into pieces, figures, and then when you get on it, you will be able to see the camera coming and there will be a camera coming. It depends. A short battle can be maybe two or three minutes, but at the end of the game, you know, you've got a massive siege with like 20 units on your side, 20 units on their side. You've got orbital cannons blasting wow. holes in the world. And that can maybe take 30 minutes. Well, talk to us about when we play the game. Yeah. 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 Thank you for sharing the horrors of the future. <laughs> and for our next game, Frankie, I have to ask you, what year is it? Why, the year is 1946, Sean, my dear boy. Europe lies in ruins torn apart by the satanic Plan Z. A brave band of heroes cast the Fuhrer into hell, but little do they know, the nightmare is far from over. Actung, this is the world exclusive reveal of the next shooter from the makers of Sniper Elite 4. Теперь следующая игра от разработчиков Sniper Elite 4. Я надеюсь, это следующий польский шутер, коих мы с вами заслужили. Rated M for Mature. Если честно, эти ведущие не такие прям, прям отличные, но они ведут такую конференцию сомнительную. То есть по делу они должны конференцию Microsoft вести, конференцию Sony. Но они ведут пока гейминг шоу. Я думаю, их должны когда-нибудь подметить и когда-нибудь создадут презентацию мечты. Зомби и снайперы. Вот то, что я люблю. Опять зомби армии. Снайпер элита, да. <смех> Только кооперативно? Или в зомби армии уже был кооператив?
А, это зомби армии 4 все-таки. И судя по всему, в ней будет... А она тоже будет по Epic Game Story первоначально. Стима даже в помине нет. Вроде такой игры можно и глянуть. Лучше бы ремастер первой части сделали. Да, очень странно, что они сделали ремастер второй части, а первой еще нет. Но очень многие были этим недовольны. Думаю, может быть, они все-таки согласятся. А то, чтобы и первую часть обновить. Мы можем. Ремнант с пеплом. Joining me on the stage to talk about Remnant from the Ashes in that trailer, we got the chance to see so much new gameplay footage and new environments. Let's welcome the CEO of Gunfire Games, David Adams. <laughs> So, David, I want to ask right away for those who are unfamiliar with Remnant from the Ashes, what kind of game is it? So, Remnant's a co-op action shooter mm -hmm. set on the apocalyptic Earth and across a bunch of cool fantasy worlds. And, and I mean, in that trailer, trailer, we got to see a huge variety of different environments. Like, what are these different places? Who's the player in this story? So, as a player, you're on sort of an Odyssey-like quest to save the world, and uh, we really wanted to have a bunch of different cool locales that you go to just to experience the world. You start on Earth, but it, it rapidly changes very quickly as you get into the game. And one thing that we talked about before is that replayability is a huge focus of the game, that you could play through it ten times and still be seeing new bosses, new monsters, new locations. How exactly does that work? Yeah, I think one of the cool features of the game is the dynamic generation system. So we generate the maps, the enemies, the quests, NPCs, bosses, everything. You've built those all by hand, right? Yeah, it's all hand scripted, but the system takes all the pieces and stitches together. So you might play the game and come into work and say, hey, I've talked to a guy in the tree and fought a dragon boss, and I'll be like, I've got a guy in a helicopter, and I'll be like, I've got a guy in a helicopter, and I'll be like, I've got a guy in a helicopter, and I'll be like, I've got a guy in a helicopter, and I'll be like, I've got a guy in a helicopter, and I'll be like, I've got a guy Yeah, you can play the game over and over again to see the stuff. You can jump into your friend's world to experience the content in our world. And that's a big part of the game. Just jumping in and seeing what you get. I want to ask about loot, which is I'm just thinking part of the game. How does it function alongside this ever-shifting gameplay experience? Yeah, the loot in the game is all legendary items, and it's tied into the dynamic generation. So if you fight a boss or meet an NPC or get a cool, unique side quest, it generally coincides with a cool, unique item. It might be a boss weapon or a magical item or armor. So if you play the game, you get all the different equipment than I have. And in the trailer, I also saw that there were three people walking through these. You mentioned the co-op experience. How does co-op function in the world? So the game is full co-op from beginning to the end. You can jump in at any point, and the game's definitely slower paced, more difficult. I mean, you will die a lot in this game, so awesome. There's a huge advantage to bringing your friends to come in there and help you take down bosses or fight off different events or just generally progress. The game can be a bit slow, but if you're a fan of the series, it's a good challenge for yourself. So it's coming out on August 20th on PC and Xbox and PS4, and if you pre-order the game now, you can actually get in early and start playing the game August 16th. Well, awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, David Adams from Gunfire Games. Thanks so much for talking to us about Remnant. And as we mentioned earlier, keep those questions coming. I will be asking on stage the creative director of Borderlands 3 everything you want to know. 
Doesn't matter what platform you're on. Это живо, это что-то прям. PC gaming show. Давно не уже никакой реакции. Игра видимо понравилась. This one was announced two years ago at the PC gaming show here. Да, но игра вообще, наверное, может в августе тоже пораньше выйдет. Просто тоже какой-то комментированный. Игра интересная. It's going to be available on the Epic Game Store in one short month on July 11th in Alpha. Let's take a look at some of the footage of what you'll be playing. 11 июля вот данная игра будет в Альфе. Game Store. Карточки. Planet Zoo is the latest game from the makers of the brilliant Planet Coaster. Please welcome Piers Jackson and Lisa Borans from Frontier Development. Так, ребята из Frontier Development расскажут свои игры. What Planet Zoo are we going to be running here? So Planet Zoo is a new management system. Ребята сделали очередной сим симулятор, но в этот раз посвященный забор the most authentic animals we believe you've ever seen in a video game. Each of our animals are unique. They have their own needs, their own desires, and their own behaviors. They interact with each other and react with the world you build around them. And today, for the very first time, we're really excited to show everyone here a gameplay video and to announce it. Let's buy the world's largest gameplay pass and take a look at Okay. Simulator chat of Pikachu. I also wanted to say that. I thought we had to make a Zoo Simulator Zoo to Con Pikachu Edition. Lisa, I love some of the animal shenanigans here. I mean, hippos pooing, yeah. adorable baby elements. It's absolutely brilliant. I can't wait to play it. But before we saw the trailer, Piers mentioned this is a modern zoo, but what exactly does that mean? So nowadays when you go to the zoo, you're not just going to see all the lovely, pretty animals. You go there, you want to be... You know, learning about conservation. You want to learn about the research. No, it's not just a simple zoo where the animals are all pretty. And these ideas of the modern zoo are really important. More, let's say, serious processes that are happening in real life. The welfare of the animals. Related to the adaptation 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 of Lisa has done a fantastic voiceover for it, and we'll be releasing that onto Frontier's YouTube channel. That goes live this Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. 
Well, fantastic. I cannot wait to watch. Thank you so much for joining us. Invalidami, everyone. Invalidami. Next up, we have a very special guest all the way from Japan. Please welcome to the stage, gaming industry legend and Shenmue creator, Yu Suzuki. That is right. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the stage is a legend of Japanese game development. It's Mr. Yu Suzuki. Yu Suzuki? Okay. In addition to being the brain behind the following the games, game Hang machine. On, Space Harrier, Outrun, Afterburner, Virtual Racing, and Virtual Fighter, yu -san also created the Shenmue series. No. And he's here to talk about Shenmue 3 right now. Take it away, Yusan. Uh, I am so honored to be <laughs> standing on the stage today. <laughs> so you the microphone. Production. I just want to say Actually, thank you <laughs> to the old fan supporting me for the long 20 years. Thank you very much. Я в общем делаю эту игру, которую мечтали 20 лет. Меркан, если что, третья Шинму это не окончание истории, там она, условно говоря, далека будет еще от своего идеального завершения. Насколько я помню. То есть это как бы первые две Шинму это как вот три главы Шинму, три это будет сколько там еще глав, еще будет до окончания основной истории очень много. I'm, I'm gonna to be a, a full master. Ago, martial arts were bad, but humans are interested. I'm an artist. I'm a performance artist. They practiced in secret, away from prying eyes, and became stronger. One even practiced atop this very boat. Nam Tren survived the ban and was passed on in this way. What did you say to me? What did you say to me? They and extort money from shop owners, get drunk by noon and cause trouble. Everyone I'll show you who's boss of this gym. They are heartless. Hey, wait right there! This is him, the Japanese guy who got in our way. You've got some guts to bomb here on your own. What? 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 is near and dear to my childhood heart. It's based upon a game I grew up playing called Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Let's take a look at an upcoming collaboration between Coffee Stain Studios and Lava Potion. Так, ну как бы ты тоже похож на ФТО, ребят. Ведь сверху до до пикселинг. А на самое Dead or in living, it's near and it's far. In human and the lava and beasts of the land, it flows through the forest, it breathes the sand. Songs of Conquest. 
Традиционная стилистика старых Наша игра начинается с того города, который прописан в трейлере. Собирайте свою небольшую армию, и там, соответственно, путешествуйте по миру, улучшайте город, собирайте ресурсы, и дальше делаете то, что вы хотите, приключения не такие, я никогда не знаю, что произойдет дальше. Obviously, get the resources to build up the township, but yeah. for what reason? Armies, man, talk to me about those juicy battles. Yeah, so, so the battle, just like the whole game, is turn-based. Uh -huh. So you go into combat, you bring all your troops in, and you start by deploying them, and then all the troops have different stats, like offense and defense and health sure, and so sure. on. And they go in initiative order, and then you slug it out, and it's a bit like chess, but instead of like pawns and bishops, you have like horned wands and face spirits. Great, and griffins yeah. and so on. Yeah, and all those things. And, well, you know, as, as someone who just loves the Heroes Might Magic series, series, I know that you have translated a lot of the gameplay elements into songs of Conquest, yeah. but what are some of the modern elements that you're bringing in? Um, well, there's a lot of it, but I mean, but one of them is that magic is, we call it the essence. So basically, uh -huh. in, our, in the Songs of Conquest universe, everything has an essence within there, it's sort of like the soul. So your troops, they have an essence. And to do magic, you need to bring the troops With the right essence, with your wielder's skills. Oh, I see. So if you want to make your troops go faster, you need to bring a troop that has that essence. So maybe to ask a basic question, what if my opponent kills that cavalry? Then you can't do the magic. So, oh, I see, okay. Yeah, so if you're fighting someone, you kind of have to weigh the pros and cons of what to kill off. If you want to destroy their magic or their powerful magic. Where can people go to get more information? And as always, when's it coming out? In late 2020. Игра еще в такой альфе, может присоединиться к закрытой альфе, и если она и выйдет, то ближайшая потенциальная дата релиза это конец 2020 года. Now our next title is an update to a popular co-op game. Let's see what's in store for Vermintide 2. А нет, Vermintide. Ваки ты еще тут, Ваки, Ваки, Vermintide. Она самая Неркан, она самая. Versus. In Per Aspera, you're an artificial consciousness orbiting Mars, whose ultimate purpose is to terraform the planet, starting from a single drone in your landing site and turning the planet into a flourishing second home for humanity. Courtesy of developer Talon Industries and publisher Raw Fury, here's a first ever look at Per Aspera. Следующая игра про трансформирование планет, про Фьюри, будете колонизировать, будете трансформировать, создавать новый дом для жизни, где-то там далеко в космосе. Очередная космическая игра, где вы будете обживать новые горизонты. Red Cerebrate, у нас здесь веселая качественная игра. And begins their mission. Amy, 
Are you with us? Of course, I'm with you, Houston. In the Assassin's Creed universe, our next guest sent players back in time to rewrite history. But for his debut project with indie studio Panache Digital Games, he's going to take us back 10 million years to where humanity began. Here to tell us all about ancestors is creative director and co-founder Patrice Desilet. Welcome, Patrice. Patrick Desilet. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy Человек, to be been waiting был с тем человеком, который создавал оригинальный Assassin's Creed. Теперь он создает игру куда более, скажем так, приземленную, но не, 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 не такой амбициозной в плане технологий, но более амбициозной в плане того, что в ней будет внутри. Игра в открытом мире, игра будет посвящена развитию всего мира, его мировой истории, развитию природы, развитию человечества, развитию цивилизации. И вот он спустя 10 лет вернулся, чтобы демонстрировать игру самолично, в общем, основа игры, я так понял, будет путешествие в Африку, которая она была 10 миллионов лет назад. И вот вы будете одним из этих основателей, который будет влиять на то, как будет выглядеть мир вокруг, как вы будете расширяться. Соответственно, взаимодействовать вы будете не каким-то одним героем, а несколькими целой группой. I imagine our ancestors had uh, a lot more issues to deal with than we do today. There's uh, going to be a lot more dangers in this world, so tell me a bit more about those. Well, it's all about from a prey to a predator. Basically, at the beginning of the game, everybody is there to kill you and devour you. And, and, and basically, at the end, it's pretty much you. You're the predator and everybody's afraid of you. And that's, that's the idea of ancestors, the human Это одна из наших главных идей была в процессе разработки проекта. Ваше желание что-то открывать, ваша любознательность, она будет очень вам пригодиться в нашей игре. Right? There's, there's no story per se inside. It's not about going and see mission givers. It's not about Тут looking не будет at the mini maps and the little dots. It's about you, hey, Homo Can you survive like our ancestors did? And that's the question I'm asking players. And the, for you to answer that question, on August 27th, well, I was going to ask you, 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 you when we can see it, and you answer my question first. Thank you very much, please. As Patrice says, Ancestors will be released August 27th, and you can Игра learn more at ancestors.com. Хотя я на удивление не так особо о многих вещей до конца не узнал. Очень много было трейлеров, очень много этого было сеттинга про обезьянок и Африку. А теперь немножко узнаем про Epic Games Store. Ага, Шенму. Неужто эксклюзив Epic Games Store? Незаглавная игра Untitled. Незаглавная игра про гуси. Про тасова.
И еще одна вещь. <свист> <свист> я такой Red Dead Redemption жду. <свист> Тут такое. Ну ок. Авточес. Я понял. Я, я все понял. Я, я... Гейп. Аривидерч. Это, 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 это такая подляна... Подляна Валф. Это... Красиво, конечно, но в тот час я не люблю. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I'm the CEO and the founder of Dragon's Game. Dragon's Game is a game developer and a publisher comes from China. I'm so happy to be here today on this stage to introduce our game, Auto Chess, to all of you. This is really an exciting moment for us. And so Twitter says, this is a real engaging game of Auto Chess. Dragon's Game now is working with the creator Oh, okay. Oh, auto chess, Jodo Studio. Uh, we are working together to bring auto chess to our world, both on PC and uh, mobile, so that everyone from anywhere with any device can enjoy the same fun of auto chess. Now we are building the PC version with uh, by using the uh, game engine of Unreal Engine 4. As everyone knows. Unreal Engine is one of the best game engines of the world. With the help, with the help of Apple Games and by the power of Unreal, I believe we can finish our job. Игра будет работать на Unreal, игра будет на Mobile, игра будет на ПК. Насчет кроссфо еще не до конца понятно. The PC version of Auto Chess will be coming to the Epic Game Store. I look forward. <laughs> I look forward to all look of you playing auto chess on PC later this year. Okay, thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you, Loring Lee. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thanks so much for yeah. sharing the news with us. Once again, auto chess, if you have not played it, you must check it out. It is so fun. Our next title with Frankie up above, I understand is an inspired indie game. We'll find out, Sean, because one of the things we Может, love about this game is the way the game creators from all over the world enjoy the creation of one another's work. Chris Towers is a great example of that, a gorgeous indie love letter to classic JRPGs developed by a team in Colombia. Chris Towers' spin on the genre brings a unique perspective that lets you see the past, present, and future on one screen at the same time. So you'll see the future change based on your decisions in real time. Here's the world exclusive reveal of Chris Towers. Что, ребят, хотите японские RPG? Вот они, наслаждайтесь. На что вы хотели? Лучшая индюшка 2017. Мэ. If you learn from the past and act in the present, Celebrate Andrea Torre, and you're dead. Quaka, уже в могилке гроб закрыт, но еще земелька не завален. Дорогие ребята, good game, наше все. In PC gaming. It's not the size of your weapon, it's how you use it. And I'm holding one of the, well, well quite frankly, it's, it's a bit average, isn't it? It's just your average, you know, Glock, really. No, it's one of the ridiculous alien weapons from our next game, Valfaris. A brutal, heavy metal-infused 2G action platformer inspired by true old-school classics like Contra and Turrican. 
Assuming the role of fearless warrior Therium, players must blast and slash their way through the doomed citadel of Valfaris, overcoming its deadly environments and enemies before challenging the arcane evil at its very heart. Get ready to rip the galaxy a new wormhole. From publisher Big Sugar, this is Valfaris. Опаньки. В общем, ребят, главное, это не то, какое у вас оружие, а то, как вы им пользуетесь. Поэтому, вот вам новая игрушка. Соответственно, брутальный-брутальный и жесткий геймплей. С видом от второго лица. Just incredible action in the Valforest trailer. I'm very excited for our next guest. In case you have not been in downtown LA, E3 is covered with Borderlands 3 art. It's amazing, it's beautiful. And joining me is the amazing and beautiful Paul Sage, creative director <laughs> of Borderlands 3. Beautiful to meet you. Yeah, yeah, creative you director of Borderlands 3. Welcome. Borderlands 3. I mean, there's been so much hype around Borderlands 3. What's the stuff you're really excited to be sharing this year at E3? Oh man, so you know, we've talked about our Vault Hunters. Well, this time we get to talk about Moe's, and she is our uh, Gunner Vault Hunter, so yeah. she has a big mech, so it's one of the things. All about loot, we're talking about, you know, the different loot, such as shields, grenades, those yeah. things, going to different общем, planets, so a lot of stuff. Well, well, I mean, I'm going to start right off with Moe's. Tell про us everything you can about. About. Okay, yes, I'll tell you everything I can. So Moe's, again, like I said, she's a mech pilot. She has this big mech, it's called Iron Bear. She gets into Iron Bear. Yeah. You know, we have multiple action skills, which means that she can equip either a minigun or a railgun or a flamethrower. You know, if you want to barbecue your enemy, something like that. So, oh, nice. You know, uh, yeah, Moe's is a, a terrifically fun character for us right now. Now, now I'm excited to be calling a whole bunch of community questions. We're going to break it into two categories. First, there's a whole bunch of repeat questions that I want to make sure we get to right now. One of the big categories is about loot. Because you've mentioned having a billion guns earlier, but what can you tell us about some of the other gear, the other progression systems right. in the game? Yeah, so uh, you, let's talk about grenades. Like one of my favorite things that we don't get to talk about a lot. So in the past we've had grenades that they've had yeah. like one thing, they can bounce, they can stick to different things, you know? Yeah. This time we're combining like all of those things. So for instance, the other day I was playing and I threw a grenade and that grenade had a bounce, it would stick, an explosion would come out, and the grenade would fire guns as it was going through, right? So we have like a ton of different grenades that are in there. And they just shoot or shoot. Shield where if you duck, they just shoot or shoot. They can do so just tons of different things we have with our characters. Class mods are unique, and they give you skills this time as well as enhancing the skills you currently have. I also remember earlier you mentioned about artifacts. What are those? So artifacts are, you know, we kind of see that what the game show will go out. The game will be like, can I just slide into things? Can I jump? Can I mantle? Right, right, right. So we're playing with them. We slid into a barrel right in the barrel. Well, that's kind of fun. Yeah. So why don't we do something like that? So our artifacts actually add certain things to the game. So we're not playing with them. So why don't we do something like that? So our artifacts actually add certain things to movement. So for instance, you can slide faster. You can slide, and every time you slide, there's an explosion. We have something we call we call. Хороший продакшн, хороший контент. Uh, second category of questions unrelated общем, to loot. Category of questions unrelated to loot. Well, there's going to be a single player campaign. What's going to be happening after the campaign? What are some of the beyond the single player, maybe end game content that you can talk about? All right, end game content. Okay, well, it's E3, so I can get a little bit. So we have everything where we call Guardians. So for those people who play Borderlands 3, you might remember Badass. Badass ranked. You can get, you know, it's basically the type of game that has a progression system that added to your stats. Yeah, we doubled down on that. We have what we call Guardian rank. And Guardian Ring not only has that infinite progression, but it has skills and different skins that you can open up as you go through. And the cool thing about that is, like, every character that you play on on that account yeah. gets the benefits of Guardian Ring. Oh, interesting. All right, last category we're going to go through, and then we're going to hit some rapid-fire questions. 
How do the boss fights in Borderlands 3 compare to Borderlands 1 and 2? I know those were big aspects. Like, how how do you build build a right, so I think of a boss fight, you know, like I, I'm an old school Nintendo fan, right? So I love huge boss fights that have like three oh, yeah. phases and stuff like that. So now those people, you know, smart people in the audience know that we've talked about going to vaults instead of vault. Right, and so there are right, different, right. like huge boss encounters there uh, that are just you know multi-phase boss encounters. We have like a lot of different mini bosses. Это обещают сделать более интересный геймплей, кстати, на боссах. We will basically be allowing anybody to jump in at any time. So awesome. Can I pet the gun? Да, хода ваших друзей в процесс каждый месяц в любой момент. Это персональный вопрос. Хорошо. Сэм Уайзман спрашивает, есть ли у нее новая компания, Это что я хотел сказать об этом. О, ты, я извиняюсь. Хорошо. Тайни Тина будет Да. Найс. Will we get to see flash? Yes. Will we see golden keys and or shift codes for Borderlands 3? Absolutely. Will there be duels? Yes. Other kinds of PvP? Mm, yes and no. <laughs> and also <laughs> maybe. And and will you be able to transfer weapons between characters? COVID Absolutely, anymore. right from the start. Perfect. And when is the damn game coming out? Friday the 13th, 2019, September 13th. Perfect. Borderlands.com for more information. Thanks so much for joining me on stage. Sean, thank you. And once again, if you have not seen all the setups in downtown for Borderlands, they're, oh, they're beautiful. Our next game, we're going to be revisiting a guest that we saw earlier in the show. Тот момент неловкости, когда ты уже закончил интервью. What you got for us? Ведущему. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, hi, we're, we're live. Sorry. Hello. I was just, uh, yeah, I was actually testing out my outfit for this weekend. I don't know. What do you think, John? I, I think you look really sharp, as always. Very sharp. Well, thank you so much. John Gibson, president of Tripwire, thank you for joining us again on the show. Yeah, very, very to be busy here. man. Yes. Yes. Now, last year, we revealed Man Eater to the world. And can you That's remind right. anyone who missed it what the game's all about? Absolutely. Maneater is an open world action RPG or shark PG as we call it. You start Ребята, в том году напомню анонсировали игру в открытом открытый RPG. И вы играете за какую вам нужно есть всех людей. И соответственно играющие не высшие ребята привезли, чтобы вы снова смогли в нее поиграть, на нее посмотреть. Да, игру для Адликса делали. Не дат релиза не до сих пор, и игра выйдет для Epic Games Store, а не для Steam. And Scaly Pete's the villain in this tale. Sk Pete is uh, is a best fisherman in the Gulf, the best shark fisherman, or he'll tell you he's the best shark fisherman. And uh, he disfigures our baby shark at the beginning of the game and does some really nasty things. So he's not a very nice guy. And now the story of Maneater is told uh, through the lens of a reality show called Shark Hunters vs. Maneaters. And it follows Pete and uh, the player shark on its adventures. And uh, you know, it's it's a really you know it's it's, it's a very exciting way uh, way to tell a story. And based on that, 
trailer. To be honest, John, it looks like your main goal of the shark is to just bite everything. Yeah, there is, there is an awful lot of man-eating going on in this game. That is the name of the game. And, uh, but we like to think of the game as a shark-tastic fun action game. It's like GTA if you were a shark. Um, but there's <laughs> <laughs> there, there is more to the game than just eating, so uh, we spent a lot of time making, moving through the water, breaching out, and, uh, and adding abilities to go up on the beach for an afternoon snack. Um, so, uh, there's, there's a lot of exciting things that you can do in the game. And you mentioned that the shark PG, how does that graphic system work? So there's three facets to, to the shark PG elements of the game. Uh, there's growth, there's life phases, and there's evolutions. So growth, uh, comes about through eating things, nutrients, people, whatever you can find. And that's kind of like your XP in the game. That allows you to level up, your shark will go a little bit, you get more powerful. And then at key phases, uh, that we call life phases, you'll, you'll, you'll make a big deal. So let's say you're a brooding teenage shark, and you're about to become an adult, and you become an adult, you take a big leap in size, a big leap in uh, power, and capability. And then, as you increase these life phases, you unlock evolutions that can be applied to parts of the shark's body. For example, you could get metallic teeth that allow you to shred boats, or a powerful tail that allow you to jump to incredible heights, or you could get mutated lungs that allow you to spend a little more time on the beach getting those afternoon snacks. Just really quickly, John, everyone's wanting to know this question. When's it coming out? Oh, so we're really hard hammerheading away at this game uh, and trying to make it the most awesome shark RPG ever. Um, we are not ready to announce a date, but we're pretty certain you're going to see it before the next PC gaming show. Well, I hope we do, John. Uh, ребята, точно не могу сказать, когда игра выйдет, но постараюсь релизнуть ее до июня следующего года. Because you guys look tasty, so I'll see you in a bit. I'm just going to have a snack. Thank you, John. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Да, очень смешно, когда Драгерен говорил, что в Epic Games Store не будет всяких мусорных игр, а тут у Мишарк RPG и куча всяких игр, которые будут в закрытой бете. В общем, вот он ваш Epic Games Store с триповыми проектами. Наслаждайтесь, как говорится, наслаждайтесь. Деньги не пахнут. You know, one of the absolute best parts about being sponsored by Iwin for the PC Gaming Show is that I get to talk to you about Terraria. Terraria is one of the best-selling PC games of all time, selling almost 30 million copies. Well, ребята, он видите, три процента скидка на кресло. Is the fact that the developers relaunch and continue to add content. You better not kid each other. That's been a story to prove. Four thousand. Let's take a look at their penultimate expansion coming up: Terraria Journey's End. Да фига ты, Драгерен. Я говорю то, что Драгерен мне в свое время говорил, что в Epic Games Store не будет инди говна. А на, на ПК Gaming Show мы все это прекрасно видим. Ты мне напомнил эту тему. Я взял твою, твой намек и выдал ее Драгерену. Как говорится, nice выстрел. Гирен, я обожаю это делать, поэтому вот вам качество, хороший зависший трейлер, пока гейминг шоу все дела. Даже трейлер у Террари лагает, ребят. Сорян. Now, if, if you haven't played her story, you totally should. It's fantastic. I want to know. It is a game where you watch live interactive video in order to uncover what's going on in the world. What is it that's going on in the world? So, like her story, Telling Lies is a game in which you watch video footage to piece together a story. And this time, we have a woman who has stolen an NSA hard drive. 
which contains secretly recorded intimate and private conversations between our four characters. Something has gone terribly wrong, and it's up to you to figure out what and why. It's time to take a look at some of the gameplay mechanics and some of the challenges that we have to take a look at. Five stories about the story of 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 the story. Что там было старый? Старый был замечательный. So all that walking around in a 3D world. Yeah. And we apply that directly to the story, to the footage itself. So you're going to be scrubbing around in these clips, paying close attention, and you're going to be picking up on the subtext, listening to names, people, places. And with that information, you're going to use that. Okay, на самом деле, Her Story очень занимательная игра. Если ты знаешь английский язык, то я постараюсь даже ее как-нибудь пройти на стрим. It's a really like an open world video game. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of times with the open world video games, they talk about you know, square kilometers. Or miles in America. Um, what's the sort of scope that we're talking about? Like, how many hours of footage is there? So we got like over 10 hours of footage here. Wow, so it, really, it's a story that encompasses like two years. What I wanted to do with this one was, like I say, really embrace this. Продолжительность нашей игры общая, ну, роликов снято на. Explore and follow your curiosity. Just lose yourself in this story. На 10 часов. Внутри игры развивается аж два года. I'm curious, Logan, as as a performer in this kind of game. What is it like to actually try to have all the layers in there for each performance, also not knowing when a player is going to be seeing the specific footage you're performing? Well, it's definitely a non-linear uh, open world game, but our approach and Sam's approach was um, not unlike a movie or a TV show, and we had to understand it A to B. And so for the most part, that's how we shot it, obviously, when you're shooting a movie or a TV show. Yeah. Um, and in this case, a game, you're going to be shooting out of, out of order. But we actually stayed pretty linear in how we approached the story. We, we went after it like uh, all the other times we were actors. We just went after intention yeah, yeah. And, and what do we want. And, and, um, and we tried to make it as deep. Um, you know, it's got a lot of scope. Мы стараемся взять наиболее удачные моменты из телевизионного формата и добавить в него больше интерактивности, хотя игра будет сохранять такой линейный мотив повествования. Very soon, I promise. We'll have a date soon. Right now, you can go to Steam. You can wish to Steam. We all love Steam. And yeah, you can play Steam. A little bit more during E3, and the game will be out. Yeah, very soon. Fantastic. Desperate to get it out there. Yeah. As soon as humanly possible. Well, Sam Logan, thanks so much for joining me on stage. Once again, telling lies.